trying to. Don't yell at me. And here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table. Solo in Denmark, all alone. Miss Mary is still doing secret Grammy Mary family stuff. Out there in the physical yonder. So, Grimnir, thanks for the place to do this crazy, wacky shit when a uh, Saturday comes up to do a dark day. And if you're in a chatty mood, you feel like typing, we've got bots and bodies just waiting to hear from you. And they're these people. Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, A-C-T, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Rob works the bubbler. Asmo Chalston Circlo Hello Don Don Dan Van Meter Flash somebody that's me. But I don't type when I do radio. Graham Z but I don't think she's around. I think she just logged in and is in and out. Jabba Doctor Two from Ohio. Jays Nines Jays Prince Thrust No One. Vanna White, Weather Dork, Phantom, Beth V, CC66, Hey, Socks, Cyborg Noodle, that was Socks, little robot, I thought. Anyway, uh, Hey, Dork Cakes, the mental man is here. Duh, End Civ, Eric, Java, Dr. Kozu, Kiss, Matt, WJ2002, Mr. Snick, Ponsas, Smart Ads, and the Holiest Roger. So if you feel like typing a bunch of stupid shit at people you don't really know, those are who they are. And you can call them by their name when you call them stupid. It's fun. I do it all the time. I think the uh, phew, uh, the show today, what I call and what I'm going to name this here podcast is POTUS Creepy and the Ugly Witch from the North. Hmm. And at some points in the podcast, I guess we can go back over 2020, but I don't know. It seems like uh, it was a complete disaster or a complete success. And there was no middle ground in, in the year at all. You either went your way or you got fucked every time you turned around. Now, the things that I lost, I could probably do without bars and public shit like that. And so, I'm not really a big social butterfly anyway. Hey, mental, how you fucking doing, Johnny? Good to see you. I wouldn't have done the show tonight if you hadn't, hadn't asked. So, I'm going to try to do an hour. I hope I can be entertaining. It's been kind of a onlooking. You know, it's been a bummer of a year to, to watch for other folks. But in uh, my personal day-to-day, jeez, I think I feel guilty about how good things are through all this shit that I've been watching for the last, I don't know, 50-odd years, I suppose. It was about 9 or 10 when I started to notice adults and shit like that. And before that, I don't think I really understood it all. I mean, not even a little bit. And then all of a sudden, hey, what's this? What's that? Kind of hit me. And uh, I lost interest in academics immediately. First thing I did, I was a, almost a straight-A student. And then when I hit nine, I think something shifted. I went, fuck all this crap. I, I must have known by listening to the you know cousins and older kids that I did associate with, I think the shit that they were telling me, uh, it's all come out now. It's like these guys could see the future. They knew what was coming. And all the things that I was taught were uh, at certain ages, they were, these are the things to shoot for. Then a couple of years would go by and I'd hear the exact opposite from people that were doing it. So by the time I was about 12 or 13, I pretty much had gotten to where I'm at now, less the experience, but the uh, the information was all was all right there in front of me, looking back, I can, you know, 
what little bit of memory I still have, I can see it pretty pretty well still. I'm not I'm not uh, what do you call that memory deficient yet? <laughs> Soon probably though. Anyway, yeah, I was given Java a a, hip, a rose hip lesson on the RLM chat this morning because he's had a few issues with his knees and his hips. And at my age, arthritis is common. And I got people that were uh, familiar with organic remedy to correct my uh, arthritis for me. That was coming. It was getting to the point where I had a hip rubbing or something inside when I was walking. I went, hey, circle, my hip, blah, 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 blah. my fingers, blah, 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 blah. she says, here, take this shit. And it's about as in, you know, enticing to, to look at it. You know, it's, it doesn't taste good, but the results, it's like being a grown-up. The results in a couple of weeks were incredible. Uh, when I walk, my hip doesn't irritate me. When I use my hands with the computer and the mouse and all the gaming and shit I do, uh, nothing. My fingers work just fine. And I attribute the success to the correcting whatever problem was coming to using the rose hip. So, I didn't use the word C-U-R-E. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I feel kind of childish now. I feel like I beat somebody at a game that we weren't even playing, if you know what I mean. Um, so, let's see. What's a good topic to start off this here crazy shit with? And I come up with the viruses that don't kill you make you stronger. <laughs> You know, we've all seen the virus movies. We all know how that works, and how it goes. The next guy next to you is going to breathe on you and you're going to drop dead in the street while you're walking home from the grocery store because you were killed with the virus, the global pandemic virus right in your face, sneezed on you, at you, and you fall over dead. And the funny thing is that's the threat of this. It was only good if you're like over 60, you know, already ill, some kind of respiratory illness, bronchial problems, shit like that. Now, if you already have these things, well, you're already in a state of fear. You're already in a state of protection. So where does all this healthy people are going to give you a virus that, well, as we all know now, it was just an experiment. It, it was a uh, it was a drill. There was no reality to any of this. And all the people that were gung ho doing it in the first place have all retracted their story since. It's all right in front of you. Oh, we lied. Oh, we made this up. Oh, we flip flopped so many fucking times. We looked like ping pong balls on a table. But hey, here we sit. And it doesn't matter because you do the crime first. This is the part about uh, the system that really makes my my stomach kind of queasy. They preach all this shit about, well, we've got justice, and we'll catch the criminals, and we'll punish them, and we'll do this, and we'll do that. But society never freaking recovers from the punishment of the crime in the first place. And then by the time they catch the criminal, the crime is cold. And then by the time they get it to court 10 years down the road, everybody's gone on to something else. You forgot what the fuck they were mad about 10 years ago when it all happened. You know? And the state does this. So maybe 10 years is exa exaggerated. could be less than that. It could be two years, three years. They work in blocks of time that we're not capable of really comprehending because we get maybe 80 years here for successful and yeah they put you in a box and uh, bury you somewhere you know really cool stuff like that happens but while you're living see this is the the best part about it is this system <laughs> collectively I, i'm not too impressed with danish system either folks i think the lack of population uh, makes killing off their own just a little bit harder Plus, they're a tribe. It's different. It's not the same as a 
a country full of immigrants from God knows where and all this kind of horse shit that we all grew up with. This is a little bit more tribal. So, hold that thought because it really, it only affects people, I guess, when you're in a small community. If you're in a big city or something, you're probably not listening to me in the first place. I think the people that would understand more or less what I've got to say would be those that live outside of the big city. You know, they've either been in it or they weren't attracted. Like Mary, she wasn't really attracted to the big city in the first place. So I learned a lot about you know, living small in smaller areas from listening to her. <laughs> and because I really never, uh, I never thought I'd leave the city. I thought I'd be in the city until they buried my ass. Well, I guess Cirque had different ideas after all. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it was a joint communication or something. But uh, now we're in this rural, it's kind of cool. It's, well, it's not kind of. It's very cool. And it suits our specific uh, individual lifestyles in one place. And especially with all this corona shit these government idiots here are playing. They used it to shut the bars down. They've been trying to do that. I've been talking to the bartender for a long time. And she's always made a comment. Oh, they've been trying to shut the bar down for years. And this corona thing was the exact perfect excuse for a system to cleanse the shit the upper echelon doesn't want in the system anymore. Out. So... I see this as a, an opportunity for, well, for one, an economic collapse to be misdirected. So you don't really see it the way that you should. You'll see it differently later. It, it'll surprise a lot of people. They don't, they don't really agree with what I'm talking about. But I believe that the dollar crash two years ago and the ripple effect of the shit coming is coming. We're all going to get slapped in the face somehow, financially, because of all this, uh, oh Christ, credit, fractional reserve banking, you know, the, the central banks, they've overdone it, they've, they've squeezed the freaking life juice out of earth, and now they want to kill everybody that's left over, you know, you're still here, and you're, you're not doing what they want you to do, well, you're in the way now. They, they need shit. They need the room, you know. It's a huge planet, but wow, good God, there's there's not enough resources to feed and fuel and carry everybody. Let's cut back. <laughs> and like I started out in the show in the beginning, people have seen enough movies on television, Netflix, YouTube, whatever source they use. It goes back a long, long way. All these movies have groomed us as a collective to see things in a certain light. I don't. I don't make it a secret of how I don't see things or how I do see things. Sometimes I get a little hot and I'll express myself in an unpleasant fashion. But at least I believe the fucking crazy shit that I'm saying. I'm not just saying shit for the sake of typing it. Yeah. There's usually a reason. And sadly, it's not very often has anything to do with the person that seems to be the target at the time. <laughs> but that's the way it looks. Because I learned, I guess recently, over the last year at least, that uh, we haven't collectively learned a fucking thing on the Internet. The people I've met on the Internet, they've already got their stand. They're either totalitarian shit and they want to put a fucking uh, vaccine you and a stamp and on your forehead so they know what fucking country you belong to and all this kind of shit, chip you. All these make-believe, you know, uh, medical dreams that came true. <laughs> we've got the fucking technology, fuckers. What we don't have is sanity in the population. Sanity levels hugely disappointing. People are so easily fucked by uh, fancy words and titles, and they're so lazy, they won't take the time, whatever time it would take, to 
to sit down and even open a book, for fuck's sake. If you didn't have a computer, you could always go to, well, I guess you can't go to the library anymore. I don't know what the fuck's going on out in the physical world. But the world I came from, if people had a question, you could go crack a book open and find out if that specific topic was true or not. To a point. And I say that because we've been bullshitted with uh, newspapers and movies. But before that, you know, before all that advertising shit and movies came up, they still had the printed word to control the population. with, And they did it through newsprint. Hearst made a freaking shit ton of fucking money off the printed word, for God's sake. The guy was so full of himself, he had relics from Europe brought to California to go uh, to his mansion. Hey, the Hearst Castle. It's on the California coast. It is a unbelievable piece of architecture it is the greedy man it has landed is what that place was but you know you think people would learn their lessons and they don't it just seems like uh wow over the last 50 60 years they just got greedier and the more money you make the better you are the more and the more you have more we look up to you and I'm quite the opposite I think the more people got fuck them how much is the fuck enough you know why is it necessary to be so wealthy that hell you can control a population with viruses there's no reason for that that that's just blind stupidity on the part of the public to follow any one anybody any fucking where Christ, look at where religion gets people, for crying out loud. (laughs) They don't even, you can't even say, like, Merry Christmas, I don't even know. I've been away from the States for so long. But, (laughs) I did see a a little news yesterday about uh, an explosion. (laughs) Could have been, it could have been a terrorist bomb attack in Nashville, Tennessee. I think, right, Nashville? Anyway. And uh, it just reeks of the government to me. I mean, no matter what it is, if I, if I see something on the internet and it's so big and so amazing and all this, that, and the other, it's usually the government pushing it to the front so that you'll see it. Otherwise, I couldn't tell you what's going on in Paraguay today. Nowhere, no how. I'd have to look for it. And even then, what would I find? Nothing really exciting goes on in Paraguay. You have to go to America, Paris, or London. (laughs) All the free free countries of the world, you know. Australia, Canada, where people live and speak English. They they do things like what they're told. Wear masks. Get locked down. Shit like that. And I'm so confused. I don't know if Trump's going to go in January or Biden's going to go. Who Does anybody know who the president is? It is not fractional reserve flash somebody. It's fractional. Frictional. <laughs> fictional. <laughs> Sorry, bro. That's dumb. Fictional reserve. <laughs> there are no reserves. Grimner, as well as you, I too, am aware of the reality of our financial structure. But we live on promises, credits, and, and it's embedded into us. You got a little plastic card and keys and you own a car and a house. <laughs> on paper, it's a bank that owns this shit, but hey, you're driving it, you're sleeping in it, so it must be yours. <laughs> and, and this is, the, and, and from what I understand, the the uh, <laughs> this world new world order bullshit these these fuckers are completely insane they have made uh took them 40 years to get here i remember the beginnings of this where it really started to take hold people in their you know uh socialist bullshit because it was alive in the 60s but it, it, 70s i don't remember much of it the 80s i saw it coming back <laughs> communists you know communism and 
sticking together and all that kind of camaraderie kind of shit. <laughs> Whoops. They never caught on in the city. In the city, it's dog eat dog. I wonder who's going to win. The pirates or the Palestinians? And I think so far, the pirates look like they're uh, they're doing pretty freaking good. Man, they got us all bullshitted, locked down, isolated, don't go outside, don't mix with people, wear a mask when you go out in public like some kind of fucking asshole. Look like a dumb shit out there in your fucking mask. Protecting yourself from fucking who knows what. <laughs> this is gross. I, I mean, you know, I can understand, all right, there's people that have illnesses and they've done their self physical harm over a lifetime uh, mistreating themselves with, like, smoking, like myself, right? And at some point, they get ill. And then at that point with their illness, they expect us, me and you, to mind ourselves around them who were so careless with their fucking life that they put themselves in a bubble. You know, it wasn't my fault that they did all this shit. But yet, somehow, through the, the collective guilt of these freaking religious and educated people, they're going to hold me hostage to an ideal that I don't carry because I don't, I don't play the longevity freaking card. I don't have a concern. I'm going to live. I'm going to not live. It's not a matter of a decision you fucking make, but you can do things to you know maintain your health so you get a better chance of getting up in the morning. But for crying out loud, a plane could explode over the house and drop a toilet right on top of me while I'm sleeping and kill me. Well, where, is there a shot I can take for that, too? Because, I mean, wow, what happened to people? Oh, I'm going to get the flu. I need a shot. Why? Don't you have an immune system? <laughs> and what I've learned in the last week about that. On the internet webs, through, through the, the very roots of teaching, people are being persuaded away from teaching them about their natural immune system and making them dependent on bullshit advice from the very beginning. <laughs> so, we're so fucked. In 20 years, I'll be gone. And, you know, the people that are coming up now are going to all be indoctrinated with this vaccine fucking save me from words and that guy's not a guy he's a girl dog poodle yorkie and you will call him spot not him or he and all these ignorant fucking stupid things that you know i've read over the years <laughs> people believe it or they don't that, that's all i can come up with you know I don't believe half of the shit that I see, let alone read. Um, we've been through this. I guess Larry and Rob, me and Larry and Rob did a podcast called Dropping a Coil. Okay, the term dropping a coil, blah, 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 blah. But during that program, Larry and Rob managed to explain some pretty important things about the delivery of electricity to the individual and some of the problems that we have with the present system. And all these things could be fixed, but in the written laws, it's made so that progress is impossible. You'll actually break the law by improving the electrical system. Therefore, you're stagnant and you're stuck where it is because to fix it, you got to break the law. See, well, where did all this compliance to stupidity come from? Where, as a collective, we're going to just sit back on our dumb asses like a bunch of pussies. This is how I feel about the whole thing. And just take this ass whipping from this invisible thing that we all collectively know is there, but we can't seem to get rid of it can't change it every freaking time you try to <laughs> they nobody even tries to change it they just seem to vote for 
whichever idiot is less of an idiot than the idiot they think he's an idiot. And then, well, you know, nothing changes. And the chains get tighter. Well, I mean, that changes. But I mean, nothing changes for the better. It seems like a progressive, fucking moronic downhill slide as a collective. And I don't, I don't understand the, the lack of concern. People don't give a fuck. They have no interest. I've been doing this for a long time. And I know from country to country to country to country, it's not, it's not the, the people that don't care. It's the people that are in seats of decision that won't let them care. <laughs> and they keep getting voted into power because, well, they're the only ones allowed to run. <laughs> it's a a scam word. And then occasionally they, they let somebody in. But they're again, it's all a big performance. It's, a, it's acting. It's not real. None of this political shit that they claim is for us is worth a fuck. And if you don't know that by now, <laughs> get a shot. You know, get a vaccine. Get two. Hell, go back every freaking Monday and until you're cured of the fucking corona and get another shot, more protection. I mean, I can't believe this. They, they've come out and said openly <laughs> on the information webs that getting the vax won't stop you from getting the common cold. No. <laughs> well, what's the point of getting it then? Hmm. I, I don't quite understand that part. Yet, they're just stupid enough to get to the point of you need the shot, and then after you need the shot, mumble, 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 and they just go get a shot. Just like that. I was teasing with Cirque before the show tonight. I wasn't planning to do a show, so I had no idea. Anyway, so I was teasing with my wife earlier about I had this moment where I remembered being at the Walgreens and North Carolina, getting my flu vaccine shot to be allowed to get on a plane to go to see my parents. And all these years later, I still haven't got the flu. So I started to wonder, tell my wife, I wonder maybe they gave me water in the shot. Or maybe if I could be a conspiracy nut now, maybe it was something different, you know, something else. And when it activates, it's going to do something to me. Or maybe I got a flu shot. But so what I'm saying is I don't even have the awareness on a physical level to be aware if there was anything in that needle that they used on me the last time they used a needle on me. So, you know, I'm not a dummy dumb head or anything like that. Well, maybe I am. But... Still, you'd think that something would have come from it. It was so important that I got it, yet no flu. Hmm. So, I guess, uh, what does that mean? It doesn't really probably translate to anybody else. It was just something on the top of my head. <laughs> I'm teasing my wife about it because I haven't, outside of uh, stomach issues and a little arthritis in the in the joints. I haven't been ill in, since I left America. That's been nine years. Uh, Rob Work says, I play it a flash. What am I playing? Uh-oh. What did I play? I didn't mean to play it. Uh, I was watching the movie, but I think I turned I paused it. So I don't hear nothing in the headphones. Hmm. Well, there's only a few people personally that I personally know or have known in my whole life that uh, actually understood how seriously I do not believe in all these things everybody else believes in. It's been a gradual. I mean, I started out kind of believing it, and then the further away it got, the smaller, 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 smaller. And then after a period of time, it's just like anything else. Uh, remembering you have to look for it, it does, or, or sometimes they throw their self at you, but not very often. And it's memories about the states. Um, 
as much time as I spend on an American sites and reading stuff in English and all that, still don't. Uh, most of the things that I think about America when they come back are good memories, places I had a good time. You know. Like today, I was watching um, on Netflix. They had a uh, pale writer, Clint Eastwood. He plays a caricature of you know a religious background. And saves a whole bunch of people, and you know everybody falls in love with him and all that kind of shit. But the backgrounds to the film were, you know, mountains, things that I've seen with my own two eyes, places I've actually been to. So, in this time in history where lockdown now Denmark's even locked down, I guess if I wanted to travel somewhere, I would have to be isolated somewhere. Uh, it handled in fashion. I don't think I want anything to be done. <laughs> Anti lock. Here's something from Java Doctor Flash. Anti lockdown protests. Ninety nine percent song. This is London telling the New World Order to shove their poison vaccine up their ass. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that Java. There, but there, the overwhelming majority of people are going to be the ones that are wanting to step on your neck to get their shot, to save their own life before you. And fuck, I'm not going to stop anybody. Man, you want to get a vaccine, you go right in. You, in fact, I donate my vaccine to anybody that the first one can, that wants it can have it. I don't have any fear of dying in the first fucking place, especially of a cold. But if I did, then I would be a completely different person. If I took this seriously, it would be because I, with my own eyes, saw people dead from the fucking virus that I was told we were uh, susceptible to. But I live in a place where the average age is like 43 or something. It's a lot of old people here. Right? Medium is like 43, I think, 44. Anyway, and where's all the dead people? They should be dropping like freaking flies, these old dames, you know. But no, they're out there riding their fucking bicycles, walking, <laughs> just like always. Same old shit. Sometimes I have windows that are open to the main street, that one of the main streets that goes into town. We live on it. And in the mornings, there'll be 8, 10, 15 people in groups taking a morning walk as a group venture, and they're all relics. I mean, older than me and beyond. So, I don't know. I have no idea uh, how, how I got to where I'm at, because it suits me. You know, this is uh, the no cars and people riding bicycles kind of thing is more my style in the first place. And I came from cars. So, it's because... I had all the stuff that uh, I had in my day that I can settle for what I've got now with a smile on my face. Because I did, if I if I had come here not having the experience that I had, I probably wouldn't be mentally where I am comfortable about it all. Then I'd be a little pissy and moany. Yeah, I didn't get to drive a car. No, I didn't get to uh, fly a helicopter. I got to fly a simulator at a military base helicopter simulator that was a fucking that was the most awesome video game i ever played it was in a uh like a room like a domed room and the seat that i sat in was snug i'm small i'm five foot four and i weigh about 130 135 sometimes 140 that's about it between 130 and 140 and me sitting in this seat was tight it was just big enough for me to sit comfortably so these uh, helicopters are designed for small, tiny people to fly. <laughs> and uh, what do you call that? And you push, you move, play these like, they're almost like video games. And you got to fly the, the helicopter and then push certain buttons to get bombs to fall. And it's why it's a simulator. But it does, when you fly, actually... Military helicopter does it does it with live ammunition. That was just one of the highlights of memory. You know, things weird things that I would have never in a hundred years thought of doing, 
I was just hanging around in a military bar one afternoon, and one of my military buddies thought, Hey, you know what, Lou? You look like the kind of guy that likes to try flying a simulator. I said, How did you know? Because <laughs> I'm a gamer, you know, I play games. And all, but th- he knew, anyway. And that that's just a, like a sample of the, the kind of success that I've had with people. You know, I don't, all these, uh, Bad stories that people have. Wow. I don't know. I have had a lot of luck in life with others. Mental. What? Mental knows me. Um, I don't know. I treat... See, nose to nose is one thing. Online, eh, that's another thing. Radio, eh, that in itself. There's a whole other thing. But nose to nose, person to person. And people can slow down and just you know, drink a fucking cup of coffee and think for a minute without having to hurry up and type something to answer the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, things are a little bit better. So it's nice to see Menthol on here, because he's actually been here to Denmark and visited with us. So he's, uh, I guess, what would you call Do you call that? Well, you probably can't come back again because of all this corona crap. But if things changed, you never know. Well, he said he wouldn't fly again, so I don't know. He might not. And I know I can't get Cirque to go to America, especially now. Even I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I'd want to come back. I, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I mean, I know the language and I know the customs and I, I know how to get a, get by in the states in a, in a fashion you know, that suits me. But I've got no desire to return, and it's not because of the political games or anything. It's nothing like that. I think it's more I'm just had enough. I was lucky enough to get where I'm at. There you go. Hey, damn Van Meter. Still damning me to hell with her fucking smart comments. Well, well. I give up on some people. But uh, that's not my... You know, eh. Everybody's a fucking comedian. I know, because I'm a fucking comedian. I was getting a little p- pissed off this uh, this morning and chat at somebody. And that was just the way I felt about something. You know, maybe I'll, I might change my mind. Maybe I won't. But there's a, you know, it's been 10 months of this freaking Corona bullshit. So I think today I just had snapped with all this more shit about the system. Blah, 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 fucking blah. I've had enough of this. Fucking Corona Bologna shit. Just like Grimner. But it's a fuck. See, my my desire to control the world is no less intrusive than anybody else's. It's just mine. So when I do it, I don't think I'm aware of it. But in my defense, I think I just, you know, had a meltdown from fuck. This, we know, you know. It, and it must be affecting me in a personal uh, in a personal way somehow where uh, I'm actually seeing people slipping into that fueling the corona hoax because their personal relatives are ill so let's not make it worse by threatening them with corona which in my opinion doesn't even exist in the first place it's just a story about something that could be you know like going to the moon. Remember when we went to the moon in 1969? <laughs> now, now what's his name? Uh, Musk is going to go to Mars. Let's say what's. I mean, I sit back and and sometimes I just wonder how did we get to be so fucking gullible? I mean, crying out loud! Didn't people have parents to teach them that? You know, there's make believe and there's not make believe. I, I I never believed in Santa Claus. I didn't I didn't have parents that uh, perpetuated you know the fantasies of life, the Easter Bunny and the Jeebus, and all that you know, written stuff that people they get controlled by it because they it, they become bigger by joining that side. And if you rebel against it, well, then you, you end up where I'm at with it. 
which is, it's, it's okay with my peers, but it's not okay with people that believe in the things they believe in that I don't. Because it doesn't make them not real to the believer. It makes them not real to me, which seems to insult whoever I'm usually talking to. They don't like that part. They go, wow, you're a little full of yourself there, aren't you, Shorty, with your fucking ideas? <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. Actually, I what I think is, see, I, I've never claimed to know things. I think I got a lot of opinions about this, that, and the other. But knowledge, ah, knowledge changes. Knowledge is somehow uh, linked to experience. I don't think knowledge is what we've been taught knowledge truly is. It's not regurgitating numbers and days and this guy died because he shot that guy on the fourth of this month. That That's not knowledge. That's something that's in, uh, like an, a form of indoctrination, like performing. You know, I did it for a period in time in school, so I know from doing it. And then when I started to acquire my own sense of free will and not desire to be you know, recognized by the, the grown-ups, and I was like nine, <laughs> I said, fuck these idiots, I've had enough of this shit. And now I look back and go, wow, fuck. And everybody told me oh, through my whole childhood, teenager years, how totally fucked up and insane I seemed to be to them. So I'd avoid them. You know, oh, okay, if that's the way you feel, let's not associate. That's cool with me. Ain't no sweat off my nose. You know? And uh, so what turned out to be, you know, a, a history of rebellion against society, it turned out to be a good thing because if, if I didn't do all the things that I did, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And then wherever I, I may be tomorrow, that, that could be different. You know, I think I've learned my lesson about controlling. <laughs> you don't control life. Life, <laughs> life happens and to me. I don't know about you guys, but to me, life happens and I have this illusion of making decisions and choices along the way. But when, when it comes right down to it, there's, there's like uh, vibrations, maybe. There's things that I seek that are not visible to the naked eye. Let, let's put it like that. And sometimes things that I see and things that I hear, when they irritate or confuse me, I avoid them. They're just distractions. I got very bad vision, physical vision. And hearing's okay, but ah, you can tell people shit that's not true. You know, you can write stories on the end. I do it all the time. Write little blurby, freaking what you call it, on the chatter, you know, in the chat room, in the chat room. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just alone. It's the early, early morning, and nobody's around anyway. So I might write a little something for my own personal entertainment. And other times, I just like to sit and read what people write. I don't have nothing to say. And there's no... I'm so moody. <laughs> Being a human being, is, it's frustrating, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, the chitter-chat, I do it. Every, we're just... See, this is... We've lost the ability to... Uh, be concerned about the next guy. Some level, it's been it's been dulled or, or not at. Because uh, I'm looking for a vibration or a frequency or something, and when I don't get it, I think I'm acting out. Cirque said something to me about it tonight. He said, "Ah, you're just grumpy old prick." I didn't feel like I was being a grumpy old prick, but it seems that all the people encountering me today have. Of course, you know, when it's me, it's different. <laughs> I got my fucking office. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. Who <coughs> made me laugh, Rob. But, uh, um, see, that's where I came from. You know, I, I don't like living in that. Uh, I got in mind, fuck all you people land but I started out there that's my roots 
and I don't mean the country I was from. I meant the, you know, the mentality. I was born counting shit, you know, money. Doing, yeah, no, I, I, I hit that pipe and read Rob's fucking comment and choked up all of you guys. But I'm alone. I got no, ah, uh, man. I was, see, mental. <laughs> mental likes to do this to me. So, I don't know. He, he always did get a kick out of chattering. But I think the advice that I would give anybody is the same advice I gave you, mental. You know, if you're looking for an answer, look in a mirror. You know, it's not my answer to give you. It's maybe my job to help you figure out where to look for something. You know, I could take that responsibility on for a friend. But I don't think that I ever uh, try to tell anybody else. Maybe Cert, because I married her. But I, I don't think I tell anybody what to do or how to do anything. Uh, what I try to do is lead them to them so they can go, oh, wow, it was there all along. I didn't know. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, Rob. I, I've been I've been a smoking. I've been inside. It's freaking winter. I hate going out in the cold. It's good for me, but fucking cold. Huh? I'm from L.A., man, where the sun never goes down and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> So living here in, in uh, Denmark, it's really nice. It's just I'm never going to accept that cold, that freezing, the whatever. It's not even extreme. People in the States would laugh at me for making a big deal out of this. It's, <laughs> it's not really that bad. But to me, it is. It's all individual crap. Poor, poor me. Biggest thing in my life is... The, the weather's a little nippy. I got to stay inside. But see, in the summertime, it's so bright. You have to put black shades up to get sleep. The sun stays out in July, I think, like 20 hours for the month, the whole month. It's really uh, it's a fascinating place to live. Got seasons and cycles. And, um, spring is like six. Well, I don't know, six, ten weeks down the road. We see how long the winter thing goes. And then we start planting stuff in the backyard. This place blooms. It's all colorful. So, uh, yeah, through all this Corona balloon shit, these yodos who want to play, I don't know why they can't figure out they've been screwed. It's, it's obvious as fuck. How could you not know you're being lied to? Christ. That's the first thing that strikes me. It's... The uh, uh, attendance, now nah, maybe that's not the right word. What's the right freaking word? The uh, indoctrination to the news media where a person could actually look at the news and believe that anything that they just heard was true. And what really rings that bell really, would, really good, I guess for a new person, would have been on the internet webs, on YouTube I've seen, they show you a, like a link of all these different news programs all with the same script from one state to the other state to the other state. I mean, all over the U.S., but they're telling people in the same exact words almost. Sometimes one or two words will stray. But the ideas are just, wow, they're being pounded into the listener. Indoctrination. Ooh. Because, you know, it's, it's our nature to be a part of something bigger and not have to face this freaking dragon all alone. You know? Hmm. Oh, thanks a lot, Kate. I never would have thought that in a million years. I mean, I know I, I make fun of your sports and shit, but uh, I don't interrupt when you guys are chitter-chattering about your football games. It's only a little, you know, it's a couple hours. They're going to end. It's probably the could be the last year you ever i don't know i don't remember things being how they are now so but uh i didn't think i was that interesting it's just uh i don't know I, crap i think being full of myself is not really how you do this thing <laughs> being full of myself might be the appearance you know or the interpretation by the way I present myself. But the, you know, per people that know me, they know better. 
I never, I never put myself uh, first and foremost above my wife and my friends. Uh, fuck all that. You know? Everybody is the same. You're all. You, know, you brought something to the party. What is it? It's not like. Uh, what do you call it? I don't know. It's just the way that I attract. I guess what I am, and the people that I meet. Pretty much, very rarely do they disappoint me, you know. And even if they do, it's usually me that's pissed off that something got nothing to do with them in the first place. And I'm old enough to sit back, think these things through, you know. Oh, my ego? Fuck, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you can pop my ego because I've accomplished the things that I wanted to do. At the time that I wanted to do them, and just I, I never wanted to make a billion dollars or conquer the world. I wanted to do things like hitchhike down to La Paz, Baja, and get on the microphone at the dock and catch a ride with people going somewhere on a boat, just to see if I could do it. I had no concern about where the boat was going or who they were. None of that shit mattered at the time. I just wanted to go do it. So I did it. And it's because of that uh, tenacity or something. I don't know. I've got something. When I make up my mind to do something, I'm going to go do it. I just don't. I don't shoot for the moon. I shoot for real things that are possible. Like when I was in Scotland and I met that Danish woman, you know. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to go meet her and see if she's not some black guy named Steve fucking me around or not. You know, could be anything. You can see internet, for fuck's sake. And here I am, seven years later. Guess what? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> so, you know. But, see, being aware that you could be getting screwed, is that's a big part of it. Going into something blind, trusting. Oh, I am so wonderful. Nothing bad could happen to me. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to get your fucking teeth kicked in. This is my lesson. This is what I know. So you go in with a little bit, you know, reserve, uh, just in case things ain't what they seem they're going to be. Never disappointed because expectation is what kills you. you know? If I expect you to do something and you don't do it, how do you know what I expected you to do? <laughs> no, Grimmer. What I'm saying is, at when I met her on the internet through up, uh, world truth at that point it was typing she could have been somebody i else beside who she really is i don't i didn't know i wasn't positive i but i was willing enough to to meet her to find out and fortunately for me everything she said between the actual you know meeting online and meeting nose to nose seemed to be true so there you go and I've got that kind of fortune with, like, mental, same thing. Mental is exactly what I thought mental was. We chatted on World Truth plenty of times. And nobody would do it. I'd go in there and uh, open up. The, they had these chat rooms with, with uh, Skype or something, some kind of camera. So you could actually see who you were talking to. And I don't give a shit. I... Talk to people and nose to nose, I'll put a thing up. And anyway, so mental came in. Hey, what's up? We started chitter chattering on there, and then finally, I don't know. He ended up in. Uh, <laughs> where were you? You were down in uh, Puerto Rico or some PR? No, not Puerto Rico. Uh, that Bob Marley kind of stuff. Jamaica, right? Yeah, Jamaica. There you go. I was like right on time, just behind you. Anyway. But he wasn't feeling good, and we invited him here, and he came here, and got a little better, and he went home. And those are the kind of things that uh, I think we're we basically are, are all about. You know? Most of us, there's people that irritate me are usually uh, braggers, braggers and boasters, but no substance. You know? What have you ever done besides something for yourself? fuck's sake, we all know how fucking wonderful everybody else is on the goddamn internet. What have you done for you, brother, brother? <laughs> Nobody cares. Those, those things aren't important anymore. Sadly, I mean, and the government, 
with this Corona shit, just see 10 months of that kills it. Isolation and being bullied and all these negatives being pounded in you like freaking electric nails. Crack me. I got five minutes left. I close up with a little snivel. But, uh, wow. You know, I, I, I would like people to enjoy their life, not live in fear of, you know, drama that's just made up by a bunch of idiots that want you to dance for them you're doing <laughs> don't do it and you can't you can't stop them you can't help them this is up ah, this is what I'll close with I think I got upset today with Mike on Salt Lake City Mike on the internet because it slapped me in the face like a brick of just how useless all this information that we share on the internet the real liberty media is to the masses because they don't they don't get it they get virus they get wear a mask and they get locked down they get stimulus check and all that government goobly gop rhetoric shit that most of us just want to be away from and that that's what the masses want so there's no help, and, and I gotta apologize to Mike for, be, for being hot with him. But see, there's always a reason for me being mad. I just don't always understand it at the moment, and it's because it, I feel so helpless with knowing, and the people around me that know still get sucked into it because somebody in their family is ill, and then the the Corona hoax starts to take control of everything from there. And it's it's a pitiful thing to fucking watch, you know. And it's all based on <laughs> not taking care of yourself in your first sixty years, and then expecting to be healthy and treated special in your last twenty by everybody else coming up behind you. <laughs> it's insane, you know. Who who thought of this crap? How did they how did they sell this idea? Well, that's beside the point, Mike. Rob, but uh, how did they sell this fucking idea to a public unless the public is completely brain dead? I see. There's my uppity upness. I think I know shit coming to the surface. But I mean, for fuck's sake, how many of these viruses did I go through in the United States that never, never panned out? Swine flu, bird flu, uh, mad cow disease. So that was in England in the nineties. Uh, Christ, it just goes back. I mean, thirty fucking years of this shit. And here we are in the worst pandemic in the history of mankind, and the death rate falls because uh, nobody dies of the flu anymore. <laughs> it's all COVID now. <laughs> of course, less than the flu would have killed, but a pandemic just the same. So thanks, everybody, and Mental for getting me to, I hope I entertained. I don't know. I was rambling about shit for a while. Try to get you guys to either giggle or not giggle or something. But uh, I guess the uh, the message I have is it's all whatever I believe it is, and sometimes I have a hard time remembering that. <laughs> so uh, it should be easier, but for some reason I seem to make a big deal out of it. Uh, I'm going to start the podcast and kill this here program any moment now. Let's see. i got to open up a bunch of buttons here. Wish me luck. Wait, that's the wrong button now. Wire. And now we're going to start the server and kill the show. Thanks, everybody. And there's a schedule on the RLM for other shows. I fucked it all up tonight. Bye.